Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about database concept. What is data? Data is nothing but information that is collected in various formats such as numbers, text, media, and others. In the context of computing, data can be converted into a binary digital form that enables flexibility to be moved around and processed efficiently. The term data can be used either as singular or plural. From time to time, we come across the term raw data. It is nothing but data in its most basic digital format. As data grow exponentially over the years, the units of data measurements continue to grow as well. Databases, database management systems or DBMS, and relational database management systems or RDBMS quickly arouse to organize all these data. What is database? A database is a systematic or organized collection of related information that is stored in such a way that it can be easily accessed, retrieved, managed, and updated. It is where all data is stored very much like a library that houses a wide range of books from different genres. Think of data as books. In a database, you can organize the data in rows and columns in the form of a table. Indexing the data makes it easy to find and retrieve it again as and when required. Many websites on the World Wide Web are managed with the help of databases. To create a database so that the data is accessible to users through only one set of software programs, database handlers are used. MySQL, SQL Server, MongoDB, Oracle Database, PostgreSQL, Informix, Seabase, and etc. are all examples of different databases. These modern databases are managed by DBMS, a structured query language or SQL, as it is more widely known is used to operate on the data in the database. A database is typically represented by a cylindrical structure. Database Languages A DBMS provides appropriate language to users to help query databases and updates. It essentially creates and maintains the database. Some examples of database language are SQL, Oracle, DBase, MS Access, FoxPro, and etc. Database languages are commonly divided into data definition language or DDL, data control language or DCL, data manipulation language or DML, and transaction control language or TCL. Data definition language or DDL helps define data and their relationship to the other data types and creates databases, files, tables, and data dictionaries within databases. Data Control Language or DCL controls access to data and the database. Data Manipulation Language or DML supports basic data manipulation operations like allowing the user to insert retrieve, updates, and delete data from the database. And Transaction Control Language or TCL manages changes in the database made by the DML statement. Types of Databases There are various types of databases used for storing different varieties of data. Relational databases. It is the most efficient way to access structured information. The data is organized into a set of tables that has columns and rows. Object-oriented database. Here, the data is represented in the form of object, as in object-oriented programming. Distributed database. It has two or more files located in different places. 
the database may be in the same physical location on multiple computers or scattered over different networks. NoSQL database. NoSQL is a non-relational database that contains unstructured and semi-structured data. It rose in popularity as the web applications came to be commonly used and became more complex. Graph database. It stores data in the form of entities and the relationships between them. Centralization database. CDB is located, stored, and maintained in a single centralized location, for example, a mainframe computer, desktop, or server CPU. Operational database, also known as OLTP or Online Transactional Processing Database. It is designed to create or update big amounts of data and store transactions performed by multiple users in real time. Data Warehouses It is a central repository for data. It holds current and historical data in a single location for analytical reporting throughout the enterprise. Advantages of databases Minimum data redundancy Improved data security Increased consistency Lower updating errors Reduced cost of data entry, data storage, and data retrieval Improved data access using host and query languages And higher data integrity from application programs in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about database concept. And in this session, we want to talk about the other database concept. CRUD operations. CRUD is an acronym for create, read, update, and delete. CRUD operations are basic data manipulation for database. CRUD are the four basic functions that models should be able to do at most. When we are building APIs, we want our models to provide four basic types of functionality. The model must be able to create, read, update, and delete resources. Computer scientists often refer to these functions by the acronym CRUD. A model should have the ability to perform a must these four functions in order to be complete. If an action cannot be described by one of these four operations, then it should be potentially be a model of its own. Create. This would consist of a function which we would call when a new object is being added in a table in the database. Read. This would consist of a function which would be called to see all or a number of the objects currently in a table in the database. Update. There should be a function to call when information about an object must be changed in a table in the database. And delete. There should be a function to call to remove an object in a table in the database. MySQL database As we know that we can use MySQL to use a structured query language to store the data in the form of RDBMS. SQL is the most popular language for adding, accessing, and managing content in a database. It is most known for this quick processing, proven reliability, ease, and flexibility of use. The application is used for a wide range of purposes, including data, warehousing, e-commerce, and login applications. The most common use for MySQL, however, is for the purpose of the web database. MySQL provides a set of some basic but most essential operations that will help you to easily interact with the MySQL database, and these operations are known as CRUD operations. SQL database tables. 
Tables are used to store data within the database. They are its main component and without them, the database would serve little purpose. Tables are uniquely named within a database. Many of operations such as queries use these names. Typically, a table is named to represent the type of data stored within. For example, a table holding employee data may be called employees. A table consists of rows and columns. Columns Columns are defined to hold a specific type of data, such as dates, numeric, or textual data. In the simplest of definitions, a column is defined by its name and data type. The name is used in SQL statements when selecting and ordering data and the data type is used to validate information stored. Columns names cannot be duplicated in a table, so having two names column is no. Rows In relational databases, a row is a data record within a table. Each row which represents a complete record of a specific item data holds different data within the same structure. A table can contain zero or more rows. When there are zero, it's said to be empty. There is not practical limit on the number of rows a table can hold. However, remember, the table's primary key may have some influence of this. What I mean is that if your table holds the states and the primary keys is the states abbreviation, then by definition, since there are only 50 states in the union, and you cannot have duplicates in a primary key, your table is limited to 50 rows. A single entry in a table is called a tuple or record or row. A tuple in a table represents a set of related data. For the example, the above employee table has two tuple or records or rows. And what is an attribute? A table consists of several records or rows. Each record can be broken down into several smaller parts of data known as attributes. The above employee table consists of four attributes, ID, name, age, and salary. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about CRUD operations. And in this session, we want to talk about the others database concept. ER diagrams. ER diagram is a visual representation of data that describes how data is related to each other. In ER model, we disintegrate data into entities, attributes, and set up relationships between entities. All this can be represented visually using the ER diagram. For example, in the below diagram, anyone can see and understand what the diagram wants to convey. Developer develops a website, whereas a visitor visits a website. Components of ER diagram Entity, attributes, relationships, and etc. form the components of ER diagram and there are defined symbols and shapes to represent each one of them. Let's see how we can represent these in our ER diagram. Entity Database entity is a thing, person, place, unit, object, or any item about which the data should be captured and stored in the form of properties, workflow, and tables. Simple rectangular box represent an entity. Relationships between entities, weak and strong. Rhombus is used to set up relationships between two or more entities. Attributes for any entity Ellipse 
is used to represent attributes of any entity. It is connected to the entity. Which entity? A which entity is represented using double rectangular boxes. It is generally connected to another entity. Key attribute for any entity. To represent a key attribute, the attribute name inside the ellipse is underlined. Derived attribute for any entity. Derived attributes are those which are derived based on other attributes. For example, age can be derived from date of birth. To represent a drive attribute, another dot ellipse is created inside the main ellipse. Multivalued attribute for any entity. Double ellipse, one inside another, represent the attribute which can have multiple values. Composite attribute for any entity. A composite attribute is the attribute which also has attributes. You will see the address composite attribute which contains other attributes like country, city, estate, and street. ER model to relational model. As we all know that ER model can be represented using ER diagrams which is a great way of designing and representing the database design in more of a fellow chart form. It is very convenient to design the database using the ER model by creating an ER diagram and later on converting it into relational model to design your table. Not all the ER model constraints and components can be directly transformed into relational model, but an approximate schema can be derived. So let's take a few examples of ER diagrams and convert it into relational model schema, hence creating tables in RDBMS. Entity becomes table. Entity in ER model is changed into tables or we can say for every entity in ER model, a table is created in relational model. And the attributes of the entity gets converted to columns of the table. And the primary key specified for the entity in the ER model will become the primary key for the table in relational model. Entity relationship model. In this database model, Relationships are created by dividing object of interest into entity and its characteristics into attributes. Different entities are related using relationships. ER models are defined to represent the relationships into pictorial form to make it easier for different stakeholders to understand. This model is good to design a database which can then be turned into tables in relational model. Let's take an example. If we have to design a person database, the student will be an entity with attributes ID, name, age, and address. As address is generally complex, it can be another entity with attributes street name, pin code, city, and etc. And there will be a relationship between them. Relational model. In this model, data is organized in two dimensional tables and the relationship is maintained by storing a common field. This model was introduced by EF Code in 1970 and since then it has been the most widely used database model. In fact, we can say the only database model used around the world. The basic structure of data in the relational model is tables. All the information related to a particular type is stored in rows of that table. Hence, tables are also known as relations in relational model. In the coming tutorials, we will learn how to design tables.
In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about relational model. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's database concept. CRUD operations in MySQL database. As we know that we can use MySQL to use a structured query language to store the data in the form of relational database management system. SQL is the most popular language for adding, accessing, and managing content in a database. It is most known for its quick processing, problem reliability, ease, and flexibility of use. The application is used for a wide range of purposes, including data warehousing, e-commerce, and logging applications. The most common use for MySQL, however, is for the purpose of a web database. MySQL provides a set of some basic but most essential operations that will help you to easily interact with the MySQL database and these operations are known as CRUD operations. In this tutorial, we will implement our database based on MySQL database and explain the relationship between the Go programming language and MySQL, but you can use any database you want. Query A query is a request for data results and for action on data. You can use a query to answer a simple question, to perform calculations, to combine data from different tables, or even to add, change, or delete table data. As tables grow in size, they can have hundreds of thousands of records, which makes it impossible for the user to pick out a specific records from that table. With a query, you can apply a filter to the table's data so that you only get the information that you want. Queries that you use to retrieve data from a table or to make calculations are called select queries. Queries that add, change, or delete data are called action queries. You can also use a query to supply data for a form or report. In a well-designed database, the data that you want to present by using a form or a report is often located in several different tables. Then, tricky part of queries is that you must understand how to construct one before you can actually use them. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to create a database called person and then create a table inside it called a student which contains the fields of ID, name and age. Then connect Golang to MySQL database and be able to perform CRUD operations through it. Creating a database Before doing anything, we need to create a database so that we can store our tables in it. The create database statement is used to create a new SQL database. Now you can see the syntax. It's time to go to MySQL database to do CRUD operations using different queries. Open the MySQL database, click on MySQL connection, and enter your password.
In the left side of window in navigator section, you can see the schemas database. For example, you see my database like contact and my project. Now we go to the file menu and select new query tab for creating our queries. File, new query tab. First, we want to create a database with the name person. So we write query statement, create database person. Now press Ctrl Enter to execute our query or press execute button for run query. In the navigator panel, right click and select refresh all. Then we will see the created database with the person name. Now we were able to create first query in the MySQL database. Go to a slice and continue. Create table. A database table is a structure that organizes data into rows and columns forming a grid. Creating a basic table involves naming the table and defining its columns and each column's data type. Tables are similar to a worksheets in spreadsheet applications. The create table statement is used to create a new table in a database. Now you can see the syntax. Column name Name of the particular column with any space. Column type. Data type of the column. Data type depends upon the data of the reference column. Data type can be char, varchar, int, float, and etc. Constraints. In order to give restrictions to particular column, constraints are used. Constraints can be not known primary key, foreign key, and etc. These are the keywords which give set of restrictions to the particular column. Now go to MySQL database to create a new query. First clear the last query. We want to create a table in person database with the name a student. So before write a new query, select database by the command use database name. So write query statement, use person and go to the next line. It's time to create a student table. We want the student table to contain ID field of type integer, name field by the varchar type and age field of integer type. So we write query for create a student table by these attributes. Create table a student open parentheses field name id and its type is int id int and we set a constraint named not null, which indicates that this field cannot have an empty value. Not null. And auto increment, which indicates that if we don't enter the id value, the database will automatically generate its value sequentially. Auto increment. Set comma. Next field. Here is the name attribute and its type is varchar and set 50 characters for it. Name varchar and set 50. It represents a string and set not null constraints. Not null. Set comma. And next field is age and its type is int. Age int. And set comma. 
And finally, we define the ID field as the primary key in the table by the primary key constraints. So we write primary key and in open and close parentheses set ID. And close parentheses and set a semicolon. Now press Ctrl Enter to execute our query. In the navigation panel, right click and select Refresh All. Then we select Person Database and go to Tables submenu and we can see the created table named Student. So we could create a table named Student. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about creating a database and table queries. And in this session, we want to talk about the other queries. Insert into a statement. The SQL insert into a statement is used to add new rows of data to a table in the database. It is possible to write the insert into a statement in two ways. First, specify both the column names and the values to be inserted. Now you can see the syntax. And second, if you are adding values for all the columns of the table, you do not need to specify the column names in the SQL query. However, make sure the order of the values is in the same order as the columns in the table. Here, the inserted into syntax would be as follows. Now go to MySQL database to create a new query. We want to insert values into a student table in person database. So before write a new query, select database by the command use database name. So we write query statement use person. Go to the next line. First, we create a query for insert values in a student table by select some fields of a student table. So we write insert into a student In parentheses, we set fields that we want insert values to them, like name and age. Name, comma, age. Close parentheses. And then values. Open and close parentheses again. And set values for those fields. For example, Kim for name and 24 for H and set semicolon in the end of a statement now execute the query in the navigation panel right click and select refresh all then we select person database and go to table submenu and right click on the student table and select rows limit Okay, now you can see the new record added to the student table because you insert values for name and age fields. Now we clear the last query and create a new query for insert values for all fields. So we write insert into a student values and set values for all fields respectively, for example, two for ID and set 
Robert for name and set 30 as H and execute again a statement go to the navigator panel right click and refresh on and go to the database person and on the student table right click and select rows now you can see the new record added to the student table in this case we succeed to store two different values in two different ways inside the student table now goes to slides and continue read operation statement the sql select statement is used to fetch the data from a database table which returns this data in the form of a result table these result tables are called result sets if you want to fetch some of the fields variable in the table then you can use the following syntax here column one Comma, column 2 are the fields of a table whose values you want to fetch. If you want to fetch all the fields available in the table, then you can use the following syntax. Now go to MySQL database to create a new query. First clear the last query. We want to select values from a student table in person database. So before write a new query, select database by the command use database name. So write query statement use person semicolon and go to the next line. We want to create a select query in two ways. First select query for some fields of a student table. So we write select write field names that we want to display like id comma name and continue query from student set semicolon and execute the statement now we can see a student table records were displayed based on the selected fields id and name it's time to create a new query and display all fields of the student table so clear the last code and right select put an asterisk the asterisk indicates that all fields in the table should be selected a star or asterisk from a student set semicolon and again execute the query now we can see a student table records were displayed based on all fields okay in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about insert into and select queries, and in this session, we want to talk about the other queries. Update records. The SQL update query is used to modify the existing records in a table. You can use the where clause with the update query to update the selected rows otherwise all the rows would be affected now you can see the syntax for execute this query go to mysql database to create a new query we want to update a record of a student table values in person database so before write a new query select database by the command use database name so write use person semicolon go to the next line in this case we want to change the value of the name and age fields in the record whose id values is equal to one so first select a student table and see a student's information whose its id is one select a star from a student semicolon and execute the query now we can see the student table for the id 
Number one, name is Kim and age is 25. And we want to change these values for name to Edward and for the age is 40. So clear this select query and write our query for update. Update a student set write the names of the fields whose values we want to change and mention the new value of each one in front of the name of each field like name equals edward comma and age equals 40 and now write condition or otherwise the record whose values are to be changed so we write their id equals one semicolon now execute the query and again select on the student table select a star from a student and execute the query again now we can see the values of name and age of the record whose id values is equal to one has changed the name edward and age is 40. now go to a slice and continue delete operation the sql delete query is used to delete the existing records from a table you can use the where clause within a delete query to delete the selected rows otherwise all the records would be deleted you can see the syntax now go to mysql database to create a new query first clear the last query we want to delete a record of a student table values in person database so before write a new query select database by the command use database name use person in this case we want to delete the record whose id value is equal to one so we write delete from a student and now write condition or otherwise the record whose id value is one and is to be removed from the student table where id equals one and set semicolon now execute the query now clear the delete query and write the select query for display the changes select a star from a student and set semicolon execute the query now we can see the record whose id values equal to one has removed from a student table so far we have been able to perform crowd operations inside the mysql database in future sessions, we will examine the relationship between the Go programming language and the MySQL database. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. Golang CRUD using MySQL. We are going to see an example program to learn how to do database CRUD operations using Go language and MySQL database. We have talked about CRUD before, which is an acronym for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. CRUD operations are basic data manipulation for databases. In this example, we are going to create an interface as database front-end to handle these operations. 
We have a student table containing table information like ID, name, and age. With this table, we have to perform CRUD using MySQL. In previous sessions, we succeed to create a student table in the MySQL database and perform CRUD operations on it. So we use the same student table built into the MySQL database in previous sessions within this project to connect the Go language program. Database driver. In a computer system, an adapter program is required for making a connection to another system of different type, similar to connecting a printer to a computer by using a printer driver. A database management system, or DBMS, needs a database driver that enables a database connection in other systems. A database driver is a computer program that implements a protocol for database connection. The driver works like an adapter which connects a generic interface to a specific driver vendor implementation. Now let's go to VS Code program to implement this project. Because in this tutorial we used MySQL database, we need a driver to connect to MySQL. So first we should prepare and install MySQL driver in our project. For this purpose, using terminal, first install driver for Go's MySQL database package. So run this command and install MySQL driver. Go get dash u github.com slash go dash sql dash driver slash my sql and run this command okay First, go to Package Explorer and go to SRC folder and create a project folder named like database. Create a folder like database. In project folder, create a folder named model. In model folder, we create a file like named student.go inside it. Student.go We are going to create a structure equivalent to a student table in the MySQL database. So go to a student file and create a struct named a student with fields such as fields stored inside the MySQL database. Package model and create a structure like a student type student struct. And set fields for it. ID type as int, name type is a string, and age type is int. And set a comment for this struct as exporter. A student struct. We format the code and save the project. Now go project folder and create another folder named like configuration, which is supposed to include the settings for the connection of the Go program with the MySQL database. New folder configuration. 
We want to create the database connection settings as a JSON file. So inside the configuration folder, we create a file called config with the JSON extension. So create a file config.json. The program requires two main settings to connect to the database. First is a driver name and second is data source name. Driver name is MySQL and data source name is a combination of username, password and database name that we want to connect in. So we write a JSON file for settings of database. Driver name column and set value MySQL set comma go to the next line set another key like data source name column and set value my database username is root column and my database password is oracle add sign a slash and database name is person now we could create a json file for connection to mysql database now go to project folder and create another folder named like db tools db tools and create a file inside it like name dbconnection.go that file contains methods to interact with the database create a new file dbconnection.go before creating any function there are two things to do first import my sql driver top of database tools package package db tools import open and close parentheses underscore double quotation mark github.com slash go dash sql dash driver slash my sql and second define global variable name driver name and data source name as a string type var driver name type is a string and var data source name and type is a string now create an initializer function to be able to initialize these two variables from other packages this method receives two values of driver name and data source name as input parameters and uses them to initialize the global variable of package until that other functions can access their values so define func db initializer set dn as driver name and dsn as driver source name by the type asterisk and create body statement driver name equals dn and data source name equals dsn reformat the code and save the projects now we want to design a method whose task is to connect the program to the MySQL database and return a DB object from SQL package. 
For example, we create a function named connect that start by the lowercase character because we want to use this function just to this package and we don't use it to other packages. So we write func connect and return type is db object by the type sql.db db asterisk sql package dot db The required method to connect to the database is the open function of the SQL package. So we should import SQL package. Open function opens a database specified by its database driver name and the driver specific data source name, usually consisting of at least a database name and connection information. And it returns DB object and error. So first define two variables like DB and error db comma error colon equals and calling open function from a SQL package and set driver name and data source name as parameter SQL dot open driver name and data source name now check error status and Call fatal function from log package log dot fatal and set error dot error function and return created db object as return type return db reformat the code and save the project okay after we can connect to the database, we can perform CRUD operations by writing different functions. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define connect function to communicate to the MySQL database. And in this time, we want to perform CRUD operations by writing different functions. First, we start by writing the queries related to the select statement. So create a function to select all the student records and return a student array. Funk select all students and return type is array of model.student model.student now calling connect function for initializing MySQL driver name and data source name this function returns a DB object from SQL package which gives us access to the methods contained in the package to perform CRUD operations. So first define a variable like DB colon equals connect. After creating a DB object from a SQL package, we invoked query method that it executes a query that accepts a SQL query statement as a string parameter and returns rows and error objects. So define two variables like rows and error and calling query methods. Rows and error colon equals db dot query. In this case, we want to see all students in a student table. So we should use select query statement. So we write select query as a string parameter. Double quotation mark and write select a star from a student. Now catch error status. If error like that 
button error dot error. We use differ for closing the created db object. differ db dot close. Okay. We create a list of student struct to add each new student that is read from the database from the student table. And at the end of fetching data from the database, the student list is displayed by the methods return value. So define a variable like students column equals array of model student now put the return value of the query inside a for loop to access each of the rows by the next function so we write for rows dot next Next function prepares the next result row for reading with the scan method. It returns true on success or false if there is no next result row or an error happened while preparing it. So we create an object from a student struct. Student colon equals model dot student. and calling scan method on rows result to read records one by one. A scan copies the columns in the current row into the values pointed at by destination. The number of values in destination must be the same as the number of the columns in rows. Define an error variable and invoke a scan function. Error equals rows dot scan set a student id as pointer student dot id set a student name a student name and set a student age Scan converts columns read from the database into the following common Go types and a special types provided by the SQL package. So check error status. and continue now at each readed record that contains a student of the list of students by the append function the append built-in function appends elements to the end of a slice students equals append in students a student Now return a student list as return values of function. Return students. Now we could define a function named select all students that fetch all students of a student table in person database by the select statement. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the preview session, we could define a function named select all student that fetch all students from the database. And in this time, we want to create a main function. So we create a new package named main and create a file inside name main.go. And in this file, first we create a main function to execute queries. So go to Project Explorer and create a new package, for example, named main. 
and create a new file inside it like main.go set package main and create a main function func main before we can access data in the mysql database we need to create a connection to the database previously we designed a method called connect in the db tools package which contains a method called open from the sql package which by taking two values of driver name and data source name creates a connection to the mysql database we also previously saved driver name and data source name information inside the json file in the configuration package now it's time to use the information in our json file to connect to the database for using the json file we can open function from os package that opens the named file from reading if successful methods on the returned file can be used for reading this function accepts file pass as input parameter and returns two value first an object from file and the other an object from error so first define two variables named file and error file and error colon equals calling open function from os package open function and set json file pass as input parameters as a string type configuration slash config.json check error status log.fatal error dot error we use differ for closing the created file object differ file dot close now create a struct on top of the main method that contains variables equivalent to the keys in the json file that are used to map those keys to their data types in colon so define a struct like name configuration type configuration struct and define variable driver name type is a string and using json tag json column and set driver name driver name go to the next line and define another variable for data source name data source name type is a string and set json tag json column data source name okay now go to the main function and create an object from this configuration struct so define a variable like con colon equals new configuration now using the new decoder function of the json package we send the json file to it as a parameter after opening it and through the decode method and reads the next json encoded value from its input and stores it in the values pointed to object created from the configuration struct so we write json dot new decoder set file as argument and calling decode function and set conf as input parameter okay this allowed us to assort the values inside the json file in the variables in the configuration struct object now it's time to call the db initialize method from the db tools package to connect to the database 
So we write db tools dot db initialize. Set driver name from conf object conf dot driver name and set data source name from conf object conf dot data source name. Okay. Each of the CRUD methods uses a method called connect to communicate with the database, which requires these two parameters that we were able to inject into the dbTools package. Necessary conditions for communication with the MySQL database are provided. Now it's time to call the available methods to perform CRUD operation dbTools package. In this case, we want to select all students in the person database, so we should use from select all students function from DB tools. First, define a variable like students for a stores list of all students. So we write students colon equals DB tools package dot calling select all students function. To iterate the values inside the students, we use a range loop so that we can display the values inside each record separately for underscore comma set variable for example a student colon equals range in a students and use println function to display each record fp id column student id comma and set backslash t for create a tab space backslash t and name column student name and set another backslash t age column and student dot h reformat the code and save the project now execute the program go run dot backslash main main dot go we can see the output. Now we could select all students from person database and display each record separately. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to create another select function. We want to fetch a student by a connection, otherwise we create a query by workloads. For this sample, we want to define a function that returns a student base ID number. So first define a function name, select a student base ID, that accept an integer parameter as ID number and return a student base that ID number. So first go to DB connection and create our functions. Func select a student based ID. and set a variable like id as input parameter by the type of int and define a student as return type model the student now calling connect function for initializing mysql driver name and data source name this function returns a db object from a SQL package which gives us access to the methods contained in that package to perform CRUD operations. So define a variable like db colon equals and calling connect function. 
After creating a DB object from a SQL package, we invoked query row method that it executes a query that is expected to return at most one row. Query row method always returns a non-nil value. Errors are deferred until rows scan method is called. If the query select no rows, the rows scan will return error no rows. Otherwise, the rows scan scans the first selected row and discards the rest. So define a variable like row and calling query row method. Row column equals and calling query row method from db object. db dot query row. In this case, we want to select a student in a student table by based on the given ID number. And we should use select query parameter via where close. And so write select query as a string parameter select a star from a student and set where close condition base id where id equals instead of the id value put a question mark and as a second parameter we receive the id value from inside the method so we write id okay we use differ for closing the created db object differ db dot close now we create an object from a student struct a student colon equals model dot student and calling scan method on row result to read record define an error variable and invoke a scan function error column equals row dot scan set a student id as pointer ampersand student dot id comma set a student name ampersand student dot name and set age ampersand a student dot h scan converts columns read from the database into the following common go types and special types provided by the sql package check error status now return a student as return value of function if the student is not available the null value will be returned with the select id return a student now we could define a function named select a student's base id that return a student of a student table in person database by the select statement base id number now we go to the main function to use this query statement first clear the last code in this case we want to select a student base id number so we should use from select a student base id function from db tools that accept a student id as input arguments so first define a variable like a student colon equals and calling select a student base id function from db tools for example we set id number 3 go to the next line and display the student variables fp id column student dot id backslash n name column student dot name and backslash n age column student dot h reformat the code and save the project and go to execute the program 
go run dot backslash main main dot go now we can see the output and it is expected that the information about the student whose ID number is 3 will be returned. Now we could select a student based ID number from person database and display it. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this case, we want to create a function to insert a new student in a student table in person database. So go to the DB connection and create new function. First define a function named save that accept a student object as parameter and if the addition of a student to the database is done correctly the id of the last added student will be returned as return type so write func save and set a student as a parameter a student model dot student and set in 64 as return type value. Now calling connect function for initializing MySQL driver name and data source name. This function returns a DB object from a SQL package which gives us access to methods contained in that package to perform CRUD operations. So define a variable like DB calling equals and calling connect function. We use differ for closing the created db object. differ db dot close. After creating a db object, we invoke prepare method that creates a prepared statement for later queries or executions. Multiple queries or executions may be run concurrently from the returned statement. The caller must call the statement's close method when the statement is no longer needed. This function returns two values. First, a empty object from a SQL package that is a prepared statement and the other is error. So first define two variables like save and error. Save, comma, error, colon equals and calling prepare method db.prepare and write suitable query for create a new object insert into student set variable of a student id name and age values Set question mark instead of variable values. We set three question mark because we have three fields. Check error status. Now calling execute method from a SQL package and executes a prepare statement with the given arguments and returns a result summarizing the effect of the statement. This method returns two values, first an object of result interface and the other is error object. So we define two variables like result and error. Result, comma, error, colon, equals and calling exec method on the save object save dot exec method and set the student fields as arguments instead of question marks in prepare statements sequentially like student dot id and student dot name and student dot age Check error status. Okay. 
Now calling last inserted ID function from SQL package that returns the integer generated by the database in response to a command. Typically, this will be formed an auto increment column when inserting a new row. This function returns two values. First, an in CC4 value and the other is error. So we write two variables like student ID and error. A student id comma error column equals result dot last insert id and check error status dot error now set a student id as return type of save function return student ID. Reformat the code and save the project. Now we could define a function named save that accepts a student object as parameter and save it as a record into the student table in person database and returns the ID generated of the added new record by database. Now it's time to go to the main function to use this query statement. Go to the main function and clear the last code. In this case, we want to save a new student in person database. So we should use from save function from DB tools that accept a student as input arguments and return us inserted person ID. So first create an a student object from a student struct and initialize it. Define a variable like a student column equals model dot student and initialize it id for example 7 name for example robert and age for example 50 now invoke save function from DB tools package and send created a student object as arguments to it. First define an integer variable for return value of the function. Last insert ID column equals DB tools dot save and pass a student as arguments to it and display the last insert id last inserted id reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot slash main dot main dot go Now we can see the output. The new student is stored correctly in a student table in the person database and new student ID is returned. We can go to MySQL database and see these changes. First create a new query tab. Go to the database, use person and create a select query. Select install from a student and execute the query we could see the new student is stored correctly in database id 7 name robert and age 50 okay in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to create another function to update a student in a student table in person database. So go to the DB connection file and created our new function. First define a function named update 
that accept a student object as parameter and returns the number of rows affected. So we write func update set a parameter as a student by the type a student of model and return types in 64 value next calling connect function for initializing mysql driver name and data source name first define a variable like db calling equals and calling connect function use differ for closing the created db object differ db dot close after creating a db object from a sql package we invoke prepare method that creates a prepared statement for later queries or executions multiple queries or executions may be run concurrently from the returned statement this function returns two values first snt object from sql package that is a prepared statement and the other is error object so first define two variables like update and error update comma error colon equals and calling prepare function on the db object db dot prepare now write suitable query for update an object so we write update a student set name equals instead of value we set question mark and age equals set another question marks instead of value for age and set workloads as condition where id equals and set another question mark okay go to the next line and check error status if error like dot fatal error dot error now calling exec method from a sql package and executes a prepare statement with the given arguments and returns a result summarizing the effect of the statement this method returns two value first an object of result interface and the other is an error object so define two variables like result and error result comma error colon equals and calling exec function on the update object update dot exec and set a student fields as parameter instead question marks in prepare statement sequentially first a student dot name second a student dot age and set a student id as condition for where close student dot id now check error status now calling rows affected function from a sql package that returns the number of rows affected by an update insert or delete not every database or database driver may support this this function returns two values first an in 64 value and the other is an error so we write two variables like rows affected and error rows affected comma error colon equals result dot rows affected go to the next line and check error status and return rows affected as return value return rows affected reformat the code and save the project now we could define a function name update that accept a student object as parameter and update that record into the student table in person database and returns the rows affected number before we want to go to the main function 
we go to the MySQL database and see a student table. First execute the select query for see the records of a student table. In the student table, we have a record by the values ID 4, name, Jessica, and age 20. And we want to change value of this record. So we go to the main function and create this query. First clear the last code. We could see a student with the ID number 4 is exist in a student table and we want to change the name and age values of it. So create an instance of a student from a student struct and initialize it. First define a variable like a student colon equals model dot student and initialize fields of this object. We want to change ID 4, so set 4 for this ID. And we want to change the name of Jessica to Kim. So set Kim value. And we want to change the value of age from 20 to 30. Age 30. Okay now invoke update function from db tools package and send created a student object as arguments to it first define a variable likes rows affected rows affected colon equals and calling update function from db tools db tools dot update and set a student as argument Go to the next line and display rows effect value. FP rows affected and set variable rows effect. Reformat the code and save the project and execute the program. Go run dot backslash main main dot go. Now we can see the output. Rows affected 1. Go to the MySQL and see the changes. ID 4, the name is Jessica and age is 20. Now execute the select query and see changes. Yes, the ID number 4, the name has changed to Kim and age is 30. The name and age of a student object is updated correctly in the person database and one rows is affected. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to create another function to delete a student from a student table in person database. First go to the db connection file. Define a function named delete that receives the ID of the record to be deleted as an input parameter and deletes the record from the database and returns the number of rows affected. So we write func delete set an int value like id as input parameter id int and return int 64 type int 64 okay now calling connect function for initializing mysql driver name and data source name this function returns a db object from a SQL package. db colon equals calling connect function. Defer to closing the created db object. After creating a db object from a SQL package, we invoke prepper method that creates a prepper statement for later queries or execution. This function returns two values. First, a stmt object from SQL package that is a prepared statement and the other is an error object. So first define two variables like delete and error. 
delete comma error colon equals and calling prepare function on db object db dot prepare write suitable query for delete an object delete from a student and set where close as condition where id equals and set question marks instead of value for id check error status log dot fatal error dot error now calling exec method from a sql package and executes a prepared statement with the given arguments and return a result summarizing the effect of the statement this method returns two values first an object of result interface and the other is an error object so first define two variables like result and error result comma error colon equals and calling execute method on delete object delete dot execute set a student id as condition for where close that we received it as input parameter instead question marks in prepare statement id first check error status if error log dot fatal error dot error now calling rows affected function from sql package that returns the number of rows affected by an update insert or delete not every database or database driver may support this this function returns two values first an in 64 value and the other is an error object so first define two variables like rows affected and error rows affected comma error column equals result dot rows affected check error status if error log dot fatal error dot error and now return rows affected as return value return rows affected reformat the code and save the project now we could define a function named delete that accept a student id as parameter and delete that record from the student table in person database and returns the rows affected number now go to mysql database and see a student table execute the select query now we can see the student table in this case we want to delete a student in person database for example, we see ID 5, name is Jack and age is 40. We want to delete this record. Now go to VS Code program and continue. So we should use from delete function from DB tools that accept the student ID to be deleted as the input parameter. Go to the main function. First clear the last code. First, define a variable lies rows affected, rows affected, column equals, and calling delete function from dbtools package, dbtools package, and calling delete function, and send the student ID to be deleted as argument. For the example, set ID 5. Go to the next line and display rows affected value fp rows affected and set rows affected variable rows affected reformat the code and save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main main dot go now we can see the output rows affected one go to the mysql and see the changes before we execute the select query we see id number five name is jack and age is 14. now execute the select query now we see the student by id number five was removed from the person database and one row is affected okay 
In this part of the tutorial, we first talked about the database and its related concepts, and we were able to do CRUD operations both inside the MySQL database and inside the Go programming language. In designing this example, we tried to separate the layers so that we could design the program as an object-oriented or microservices program. For example, the database layer and the model layer and the main layer are separate, and these features causes each part of the program to have its own place and the layers are separated from each other and our codes are arranged in a beautiful order. And it will be possible to use your layer in other applications. And you can use each layer if necessary by calling it. And we don't have to implement all your programs in one layer. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about GoRM concept. What is an ORM? Before getting into the proper definition of ORM, first let me take an example which we explain the term in a better way. So, have you ever used SQL database in your application and have you ever used SQL queries to update, insert or retrieve the data, no matter how tall the queries are? So, here comes the idea of Object Relational Mapping or ORM. And it is a programming technique for converting data between incompatible type systems using object-oriented programming languages. It means you can write database queries using the object-oriented paradigm of your preferred language and there are many free and commercial packages available that perform object-relational mapping. ORM acts as brokers between us developers and our underlying database technology. They allow us to essentially work with objects much as we normally would and then save these objects without having to craft complex SQL statements. ORM sets the mapping between the set of objects which are written in the preferred programming language like JavaScript and relational database like SQL. It hides and encapsulates the SQL queries into objects and instead of SQL queries, we can use directly the objects to implement the SQL query. Why to use ORM and what are the benefits of ORM? Now the question arises that if we can use directly the queries, then why to include the ORM frameworks in between? So first all, you will get the written in language you are already using. It is some time taught to write SQL queries directly as they are complicated in some cases. So to maintain the fluency, we use the ORM so that we can write in the language we know. And second, it hides the SQL or any other database query away from your application logic. And third, for heavy database usage, like creating 10 plus tables and using many queries in them, then it is good to use ORM as it reduces the code and gives better understanding of the code to you, and as well as to your team, makes and it makes your application faster and easier to maintain. GoRM or GoLang ORM package. The GoRM is fantastic ORM library for GoLang aims to be developer friendly. It is an ORM library for dealing with relational databases. This GoRM library is developed on the top of database SQL package. GoRM is a developer friendly ORM and provides CRUD operations and can also be used for the initial migration and creation of database schema. A few more things that GoRM does well include its extendability with native plugin supports, its reliance on testing and one-to-one -one and one-to-many group of associations. GoRM also supports SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, and MSSQL. 
The overview and feature of ORM are Full featured ORM Associations has one, has many, belongs to many to many and polymorphism Callbacks Before, after, create, save, update, delete, find Pair loading, eager loading Transactions Composite primary key SQL builder Logger and developer friendly In order not to prolong the time of this session We will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session Goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about GoRM concept. And in this session, we want to do an example. Golang CRUD using GoRM and MySQL database. We are going to see an example program to learn how to do database CRUD operations using in Go programming language by the GoRM and MySQL. We have talked about CRUD before, which is an acronym for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. CRUD operations are basic data manipulation of database. In this example, we are going to create an interface as database front end to handle these operations. We have a student table containing table information like ID, name, and age. With this table, we have to perform CRUD using GoRM in MySQL. In previous sessions, we succeed to create a student table in the MySQL database and perform CRUD on it. So we use the same student table built into the MySQL database in previous sessions within this project to connect to the Go program by GoRM. Installing GoRM and installing MySQL driver. Because in this tutorial we used GoRM and MySQL database, we need to install GoRM and MySQL driver in our project. So first we should prepare and install GoRM and MySQL driver. For installing GoRM, go to the terminal and simply run this syntax go get dash u goRM.io slash goRM and for installing MySQL driver run this command go get dash u goRM.io slash driver slash MySQL let's go to VS Code program to implement these requirements tools first go to package explorer and go to SRC folder and create a project folder named like goRM New folder, go R M. Before creating anything, there are two things as requirements to do. First, in installing GoRM and second, in installing MySQL driver. So go to the terminal and simply run for installing GoRM. CD, go RM. Run this command, go get dash u. go rm.io slash go rm and execute this command before starting the project i installed these requirements after execute this command and installation is completed install mysql driver so run another command go get dash u go rm.io slash driver slash mysql after installation is completed to install the settings close the vs code program and open it again in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. 
In the previous session, we could install GoRM and MySQL driver into project. So continue to create a model. First, go to Package Explorer and in Project folder, create a folder named Model. New folder and set a name like Model. In Model folder, we create a file like named student.go inside it because we are going to create a structure equivalent to a student table in the MySQL database. New file student.go so go to a student file and create a struct named a student with fields such as fields stored inside the mysql database first set package model and create a struct named a student type student struct Set a comment for this struct as exporter. Student struct. And define variables. ID int. A tag for a field allows you to attach media information to the field which can be acquired using reflection. Usually it is used to provide transformation info on how a struct field is encoded to or decoded from another format but you can use it to store whatever meta info you want to either intended for another package or for your own use so in this case we use from ORM tags for these fields for the example for ID we write set GoRM tag backtick go RM column double quotation mark and set primary underscore key so set primary key attribute for id and name type is a string and set gorm tag backtick gorm column double quotation mark and write n varchar 50 semicolon not null so set a string character numbers and not null status for name and go to the next line and age type is int and set another GoRM tag GoRM colon double quotation mark and set not null so set not null status for age field ok reformat the code and save the project now go to project folder and create another folder named like configuration which is supposed to include the settings for the connection of the Go program with the MySQL database. New folder configuration. We want to create the database connection settings as a JSON file. So inside the configuration folder, we create a file called config with the JSON extension. New file config.json. The program requires a main setting to connect to the database that is data source name. Data source name is a combination of username, password, and database name that we want to connect it. So we write a JSON file for settings of database. Data source name as key column and set value 
My database username is root colon and my database password is oracle add sign slash and database name is person and set any configuration so put a question mark and of database name and write other settings for example car set equals utf8 parse time equals true and lock equals look reformat the code and save the project now we could create a json file for connection to mysql database it's time to go to project folder and create another package like db tools for connection to the database new folder db tools and create a file inside it like dbconnection.go that contains methods to interact with the database new file db connection.go before do anything first import goarm and mysql driver top of database tools package so we write these two lines first package db tools import goarm.io slash goarm and in the next line goarm.io slash driver slash mysql okay for using data source name first define a global variable named data source name as a string type var data source name as a string type now create an initializer function to be able to initialize this variable from other packages this method receives one value named data source name as input parameter and uses it to initialize the global variable of package until that other functions can access their values so we write func db initializer set a variable like dsn by the type string and initialize the data source name global variable data source name equals dsn now we want to design a method whose task is to connect the program to the mysql database and return a db object from goarm package for example we create a function named connect that is start by the lowercase character because we want to use this function just to this package and we don't use it to other packages so we write func connect and return type is db object by the type of star goarm.db db asterisk score m dot d b okay the required method to connect to the database is the open function of the goarm package so we should import goarm package open function opens initialized db session by its dialector and goarm config option and it returns the db object of goarm and error SQL is the programming language used to talk to those databases and each database product has its own variant of SQL so we call this variant SQL dialects first define two variables like db and error db comma error 
colon equals and calling open function from gorm package gorm dot open function and set dialector and option as input parameter for dialect parameter we call open function from mysql package and set data source name as input parameter for it so we write mysql dot open and set data source name data source name comma and for gorm config option we write ampersand and select config struct from gorm package ampersand gorm dot config now check error status if error log dot fatal error dot error and return created db object as return type return db reformat the code and save the project so we could define a database dialect for connecting to a database in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye hello and welcome to the go programming language course in the previous session we could define a connect function for communicating to database after we can connect to the database we can perform CRUD operations by writing different functions first we start by writing a query related to the create table statement that using it we can create the table in the database automatically so create a function to create a table for example we named it create table function func create table define an object variable and set 3.empty interface This function is supposed to take a struct instance from our struct and convert it to a table in the database. But since we don't know which struct is going to be passed to this function in this package, it uses ellipses as its function input parameter and receives the list of structs instance at the input parameter. This feature enables us to send one or more struct instance from outside of the package to this function to create equivalent tables in the database. Now calling connect function for initializing MySQL data source name. This function returns a DB object from GoRM package which gives us access to the methods contained in that package to perform CRUD operation. So first define a variable like db colon equals and invoke connect function after creating a db object from guard package we invoke auto migrate function it will automatically create the table based on given models this function accepts an instance of each struct as input parameter auto migrate will only create tables missing columns and missing indexes and won't change existing columns type or delete unused columns to protect your data so we write db dot auto migrate and set object as parameter now we could define a function to create a table automatically in database in this time we create a new package named main and create a file inside it named main.go and in this file we create a main function to execute queries so go to the project explorer and create a new folder named main and create a new file like main.go inside it 
first write package main and define main function func main before we can access data in the MySQL database we need to create a connection to the database previously we designed a method called connect in the db tools package which contains a method called open from the GoRM package which by taking two values of dialector object and config option creates a connection to the MySQL database and for dialect parameter it uses from open function of MySQL package that accept a data source name as parameter. We also previously save data source name information inside the JSON file in the configuration package. Now it's time to use the information in our JSON file to connect to the database. For using the JSON file, we calling open function from OS package that opens the named file for reading. If successful, methods on the return file can be used for reading. This function accepts file pass as input parameter and returns two values, first an object from file and the other an object from error. So first we define two variables like file and error. File, comma, error, colon equals and calling open function from os package os dot open and set json file pass as input parameters as a string type configuration slash config dot json check error status if error log dot fatal error dot error we use defer for closing the created file object defer file dot close now create a struct on top of the main method that contains variables equivalent to the keys in the JSON file that are used to map those keys to their data types in Golang. Type configuration extract define variable data source name and the type is a string and using json tag json column and set name for it data source name Now go to the main function and create an object from configuration struct. First define a variable like conf colon equals new configuration. Now using the new decoder function of the JSON package, we send the JSON file to it as parameter after opening it and through the decode method and reads the next JSON encoded value from its input and stores it in the value pointer to object created from the configuration struct. So we write JSON dot new decoder and set file as arguments and calling decode and set conf as arguments for it okay this allowed us to store the values inside the json file in the variables in the configuration struct now it's time to call the db initializer method from db tools package to connect to the database so we write db tools and calling db initializer function db initializer function and set data source name from conf object as argument conf 
dot data source name. Each of the CRUD methods uses a method called connect to communicate with the database. So necessary conditions for communication with MySQL database are provided. Now it is time to call the available methods to perform CRUD operations in DB2's package. In this case, before doing anything, we want to create a student table in person database automatically. So we can create table function from DB2's package. But before creating a new table, we need to go into the MySQL database to see if there is a person schema inside the database or if does not exist, it should be created. For this purpose, enter to the MySQL database and in the left panel in the navigator section, we will see the list of available schemas. Okay, now you see the person database is available. We go back to the VS Code program and call the create table function to start creating the student table automatically. Calling create table function from DB Tools package DB Tools dot create table and set an instance of a student struct as argument ampersand model dot student. Okay, reformat the code and save the projects and go to terminal and execute the program. Go run dot backslash main and main dot go. Now it's time go to the MySQL database. Go to the navigator and right click, press refresh all, open the person database and open the tables. Okay. Now we see that is done correctly and we were able to create a student table automatically in the MySQL database through our application. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define create table function. And in this session, we want to create a function to insert a new student in a student table in person database. So go to the DB connection file and first define a function name save that accepts an object parameter as any interface. So we write func save and set a parameter as object by the type interface. Now calling connect function for initializing MySQL data source name. This function returns a DB object from GoRM package which gives us access to the methods contained in that package to perform CRUD operations. So first define a variable like DB colon equals and colon connect function. After creating a DB object from GoRM package, we invoke create function DB dot calling create function. This function accepts an any interface object as argument and inserts the instance in its corresponding table in the database. So we set receive objects as parameter for this function. Reformat the code and save the project. Now we were able to write the function of inserting an object in the database. It's time to go to the main function to use this query statement. Go to the main function. First clear the last code. In this case, we want to save a new student in person database. So we should use from save function from DB tools that accept an struct instance as empty interface that we want to send the student instance as input argument. 
So first create a student instance from a student's struct and initialize it. So first define a variable like student colon equals model dot student and initialize the field id equals one and name for example kim and age 20 and now invoke save function from db tools package and send created a student object as arguments to it db tools dot save and set a student as parameter and set a message for inserting a new object fp new student has inserted in database reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main and main dot go now we can see the output new student has inserted in database now we enter the mysql database and check to see if a new record has been added to the person table or not okay in the left panel right click on the navigator and select refresh all select person database open it and select the student table from the table list right click on the student table and press select rows to display the records in the table A student table information is displayed and we see that our new data is inserted inside it. Now return to the VS Code program and add a few new records to the new student table by calling the save function again. For example, id2 and name set Robert and age 25 run the program again and do this work again for a new object id3 name jessica and age 30 save the project and execute again okay go back to mysql database first refresh all and then run the query for displaying a student table information again now we see that all the records created in the database have been saved successfully in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define to create a save method and insert some records into the database. And in this session, we want to create a function to select a statement to fetch all the student records from person database. So go to dbconnection.go file and define a function name select select this function accept a slice of a student as parameter and retrieve all students of a student table in person database so we write a students object as parameter a students a slice of model of student Now calling connect function for initializing MySQL data source name. 
This function returns a db object from GoRM package. So first define a variable like db colon equals and colon connect function. After creating a db object from GoRM package, we invoke find function. This function accept a slice of a student instance then running select query on a student table and fill a student's slide by fetching a students from database and return it. So we write db dot calling find function and select students pointer students. Now we use the range loop to display each member in the student list. So we write for underscore set a variable like a student colon equals range in students and now calling print a function from fmt package to display each record ff now using percent d for a student ID and set backslash T for create space and percent S for a student name and again backslash T and for a student age percent D and set backslash N to go to the new line and set variables a student dot ID a student dot name and a student dot h okay reformat the code and save the project now we could create a function named select that fetch all students it's time to go to the main function to use this query statement so go to the main file and go to the main function first clear the last code in this case, we want to select all students from person database. So first create a slice of a student instance. Var students slice of model of student. Now calling select function from dbtools package and pass students slice as arguments to it. dbtools dot select and pass students reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main and main dot go now we can see the output all students are displayed we could create a select function that fetch all members of a student table in person database in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we could create a select function that fetch all members of a student table in person database. And in this case, we want to create a function to update a student in a student table in person database. We want to do the update operation in two ways. First, for update a student or a record of a student table and second for update more than a student record or many records in a student table. First, we want to talk about update a student. Now go to DB connection file. First, define a function named single update. Func single update. This function accept two parameters. First parameter is an empty interface which indicates that an instance of a struct is to be passed to this method and second parameter is a map which the update information is sent to the method. Also, this function returns the number of records that have been affected by the update operation at the end of the work. So first, 
set a name like object by the type empty interface object and empty interface set comma and set a name like data for define a map data map set key by the type a string and set value by the type empty interface because we don't know what type of the value sent to the function empty interface and set in 64 as return type now calling connect function for initializing mysql data source name this function returns a db object from GoRM package so define a variable like db column equals and calling connect function after creating a db object from GoRM package we invoke find function this function accepts a student instance then running select query on a student table and fetching a student from database and return it so we write db.find and set object as argument then we calling model function from the db object and set object instance as arguments for it before calling it first define a variable like result for the return type model function specify the model you would like to run db operations so we write result colon equals and calling model function on db object db dot model and set object as argument and more invoke updates function and set data object as a map argument for it updates function update attributes with callbacks dot updates and set data as argument Date. now invoking rows affected field from result return that we show the update affected records so we write return result dot rows affected okay reformat the code and save the project we have now succeed in designing a method to receive a struct instance from the outside and update the values of the sent object according to the values given via the map sent now go to the main function to use this query statement first clear the last code in this case we want to update a new student in person database so we should use from single update function from db tools suppose a student with id number one is the database and we want to change the name and age values of it so create an student object from a student struct and initialize id value in it a student colon equals model dot student and initialize id equals one and now define a map variable for send new data after update for this instance so we write data colon equals map the type of key is a string and the type of value is empty interface name equals John and age equals 40 now calling update function from db tools package and send created a student object as first argument and data as second argument to it and fetch row affected so first define a variable like row column equals db tools 
dot single update and set ampersand student and set data and now display return type as row variable so we write fp rows affected and set variable row before run the program go to the database and see the values of name and age of id number one we can see the id number one name is kim and age is 20. go to the vs code program and run the project go run dot backslash main and main dot go now we can see the output rows affected is one now go to the database again and execute select query and see the changes okay now we can see name and age of a student object is updated correctly in the person database and one row is affected id1 name has changed to john and age has changed to 40. in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
and more invoke updates function and set data object as a map arguments to it updates function updates attributes with callbacks so we write updates and set data as argument to it now invoking rows affected field from result return value that we show the update affected records so we write return result dot rows affected reformat the code and save the project now we have succeeded in designing a method to receive a strike instance from the outside and update the values of this sent object according to the values given via the map sent now we go to the main function to use this query statement first clear the last code In this case, we want to update all the students who have a special condition in the database. So we should use from multiple update function from DB tools. First define a condition as very close arguments. Consider that we want to update students based on the their names. So define a condition for base name. First define a variable like name and we want to say that every record whose name had this value. For the example, name column equals scheme and set another variable for writing our query like name where close. Name where close column equals and write condition for query name equals single code plus name variable plus double quotation mark and set single code between it now define a map variable for send new data after updating or in other words we want to say that the values of name and age are changed to these values based on the above name where close condition so we write data colon equals map and set a string as key and set empty interface as value and set value for name colon for example david and set h by the value 50 and now invoke multiple update function from db tools package and send created a student object as first argument and name were close as second argument for the condition and data as third argument to it and fetch row affected so first define a variable like rows colon equals calling multiple update function from db tools package db tools dot multiple update and set model dot student as first argument model dot student and set name where close as second argument name where close and set data as third argument now display return type as row variable so we write fp rows affected and set rows variable reformat the code and save the project before run the program go to the database and see the name and age values of the records whose name is key okay now we can see names of the records by the id 5 and 7 are key go back to vs code and execute the program go run dot backslash main and main dot go 
Now we can see the output. Rows affected is 2. Now go to the database again and execute select query and see the changes. Execute the query. Okay, names and ages of the records by the ID 5 and 7 has changed to David and 50. Now go to VS Code program and continue. But define another condition as very close arguments. Consider that we want to update students based on their ages. So define a condition based age. First clear the last code. First define a variable like age and we want to say that every record whose age had this value. For the example age colon equals 30. And set another variable for writing our query like age were close. Age were close colon equals and write condition for query age equals we use this command to convert type of age from integer to a string value and paste it into the continuation of our a string plus str count dot ito a and set age as argument And now define a map variable for send new data after updating or in other words we want to say that the values of name and age are changed to these values based on the above age were close condition. So we write data colon equals map set a string as key and set empty interface as value. For name, set a value like John and set for age a value like 25. And now invoke multiple update function from dbtools package and send created a student object as first argument and age workloads as second argument for the condition and data as third argument to it and fetch row affected. So first define a variable like rows colon equals and calling multiple update function from dbtools package dbtools dot multiple update and set model dot student as first argument and age workloads as second arguments and set data as third argument and now display return type as rows variable so we write fp rows affected and set variables rows reformat the code and save the project before run the program, go to the database and see the name and age values of the records whose age is 30. Okay, we can see the ages of the record by the ID 3 and 8 are 30. Now go back to the VS Code program and execute the project. Go run dot backslash main and main dot go now we can see the output rows affected 2 now go to the database again and execute select query and see the changes execute the query now we can see name and age of students is updated correctly in the person database and names and ages of the records by the ID 3 and 8 has changed to John and 25. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. 
Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the GoLang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define multiple update function. And in this session, we want to create a function to delete a student in a student table in person database. We want to do the delete operation in two ways. First, for delete a student or a record of a student table. And second, for delete more than a student record or many records in a student table. Delete a student. First, define a function named single delete that accepts a parameter that is an empty interface which indicates that an instance of a struct is to be passed to the this method. Also, this function returns the number of records that have been affected by the delete operation at the end of the works. So, go to the db connection file and define our function. Func single delete set a name like object for empty interface object by the type empty interface and return type is int sixty four. Now calling connect function for initializing MySQL data source name. This function returns a DB object from GoRM package. So define a variable like DB colon equals and invoke connect function. After creating a DB object from GoRM package, we invoke delete function. So we calling delete function on the db object and set object instance as argument for it. Before calling it, first define a variable like result for the return type. Delete function deletes value match given conditions. If the value has primary key, then will including the primary key as condition. Result colon equals db dot delete. and set object as argument to it. When delete a record, you need to ensure its primary field has value and GRM will use the primary key to delete the record. If primary fields blank, GRM will delete all records for the model. Now invoking rows affected field from result return that we show the removed affected records. So we write return result dot rows affected we format the code and save the project we have now succeed in designing a method to receive a struct instance from the outside and delete this object from its table in database now we go to the main function to use to this query statement first clear the last code In this case, we want to delete a student in person database, so we should use from single delete function from DB tools. Suppose a student with ID number 2 is in the database and we want to delete this record from a student table in person database. So first go to MySQL database and see this record. Now we can see the records of the student table in person database. We want to remove the ID number 2 by the name Robert and age 25. Now go to VS Code program and continue. First create an student object from a student struct and initialize ID value in it. So we write student colon equals model dot student and set ID by 2. And now invoke delete function from dbtools package and send created a student object as argument and fetch row affected. So first define a variable like row colon equals calling single delete function.
from db tools db tools dot single bullet and set a student instance now this player return type as row variable so we write fp rows affected and set row reformat the code and save the project now execute the program go run dot backslash main main dot go okay now we can see the output rows affected one now go to database again and execute select query and see the changes execute select query okay we can see that a record of a student with id number two was removed from table and one row is affected in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session until next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define a single delete function. And in this session, we want to define a function named multiple delete that accept two parameters. First parameter is an empty interface which indicates that an instance of a struct is to be passed to this method. And second is a very close string for condition also, this function returns the number of records that have been affected by the delete operation at the end of the works. So go to the DB connection and define our function. Find multiple delete set a name like object as any interface object and in the interface set very close string as condition very close by the type the string as condition and set in 64 as return type in 64 now calling connect function for initializing mysql data source name this function returns a db object from goar package which gives us access to methods contained in that package to perform CRUD operation so first define a variable like db colon equals and calling connect function after creating a db object from GoRM package, invoke where function and set where close object as an argument to it. Where function at conditions. So first define a variable like result colon equals and calling where function on the db object db dot where and set where close string object as argument. and more we invoke delete function so we calling delete function from the db object and set object instance as argument to it dot delete and set object as argument delete function deletes value match given conditions when delete a record you need to ensure its primary field has value and GoRM will use the primary key to delete the record. If primary fields blank, GoRM will delete all records for the model. Now invoking rows affected field from result return that we show the remove affected records. So we write return result dot rows affected. Reformat the code and save the project. We have now succeeded in designing a method to receive a strike instance from the outside and delete this object from its table in the database. Now we go to the main function to use this query statement. First clear the last code.
In this case, we want to delete all the students who have a special condition in the database. So we should use from multiple delete function from DB tools. First, define a condition as workloads argument. Consider that we want to delete a student based on their names. So define the condition based name. Define a variable like name and we want to say that every record whose name has this value. For the example, name colon equals Kim. And set another variable for writing our query like name were close. Name were close colon equals and write condition for query name equals single quote plus name plus double quotation mark and set single quote between it and now invoke multiple delete function from db tools package and send a student instance as first argument and workloads a second argument for the condition and fetch rows affected. So first define a variable like rows colon equals and calling multiple delete function from db tools. db tools dot multiple delete function set model dot student as first argument and name workloads as second argument now display return type as row variable fp rows affected and set rows variable reformat the code and save the project before run the program go to the database and see the name and age values of the records whose name is Kim okay we can see names of the record by the ID number 4 and 7 is Kim go to VS code program and execute the project go run dot backslash main and main dot go now we can see the output rows affected two. now go to the database again and execute select query and see the changes execute the select query okay now we can see that the records from the student table whose name values are based on the value of the workloads condition have been removed from the student table. The records by the ID number 4 and 7 has removed from a student table. Now go back to VS Code and continue. But define another condition as workloads arguments. Consider that we want to delete students based on their ages. So define a condition based age. Define a variable like age and we want to say that every record whose age has this value. First clear the last code. Define a variable like age colon equals for example 20 and set another variable for writing our query like age were close. Age were close colon equals write condition for query age equals we use this command to convert type of age from integer to a string value and paste in it to the continuation of our string plus str conv dot itoa and set age as argument and now invoke multiple delete function from db tools package and set a student object as a first argument and age were close as second argument for the condition and fetch rows affected so first define a variable like rows colon equals and calling multiple delete function from db tools package db tools 
dot multiple delete set student as argument model dot student and set age where closest condition and now display return type as row variable fp rows affected and set rows variable reformat the code and save the project before run the program go to the database and see name and age values of the records whose age is 20. now we can see the student table ages of the record by the id number 3 and id number 6 are 20. go back to vs code program and execute the project go run dot backslash main and main dot go now we can see the output rows affected two now go to database again and execute select query and see the changes now we can see that records from the student table whose age values are based on the value of the age where close condition have been removed from the student table so id number three and id number six removed from a student table okay in this chapter we were able to implement CRUD operations in the mysql database via go programming language using the GoRM framework one of the highlights of this part of the tutorial was that we were able to design a separate package as DB tools to connect to the database that is not depend on a specific struct and can receive any type of struct to perform CRUD operations like a student contact information or the other structs. In other words, we were able to create a generator to perform CRUD operations and it has the ability to send any specific struct as input parameters for our CRUD methods. Now we have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to talk about the protocol buffer concept. Protocol buffer. Protocol buffers, usually referred as protocol buff, is a protocol developed by Google to allow serialization and deserialization of structured data. Google developed it with the goal of provide a better way compared to XML to make systems communicate. So they focused on making it simpler, smaller, faster and more maintainable than XML. But as you will see, this protocol even surpassed JSON with better performance, better maintainability and smaller size. You define how you want your data to be structured once. Then you can use a special generated source code to easily write and read your structured data to a variety of data streams and using a variety of languages. They are essentially a data format like JSON or XML, i.e. they can store structured data which can be serialized and deserialized by the wide number of languages. Let's understand this with a few examples. Imagine you are storing data about books. So a sample XML will look like this. You can see the syntax. We could represent the same structured data using a small footprint with JSON. Now you can see the syntax for JSON. And if we were to represent this using protocol buffers, it would look like something like this. Now, at this scale, the size of both the JSON and the protocol buffer seem to be quite similar, 
But as your data increases, a lot of the size and complexity gets shaved off, which will lead to smaller and more efficient payloads for your application. How does it differ from JSON? It is important to note that although JSON and port above messages can be used interchangeably, these technologies were designed with different goals. JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, is simply a message format that arose from a subset of the JavaScript programming language. JSON messages are exchanged in text format and nowadays they are completely independent and supported by virtually all programming languages. Port above, on the other hand, is more than a message format. It is also a set of rules and tools to define and exchange these messages. Google, the creator of this protocol, has made it open source and provides tools to generate code for the most used programming languages around like JavaScript, Java, PHP, C Sharp, Ruby, Objective-C, Python, C++, and Golang. Besides that, Protobuf has more data types than JSON, like enumerators and methods, and it is also heavily used on RPCs, remote processor calls. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about protocol buffer concept. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's protocol buffer concept. How do we use protobuf? Now that you already know that protobuf is faster than JSON, let's take a look on how to use this technology. Protobuf has three main components that we have to deal with. One, message descriptors. When using protobuf, we have to define our messages structures in .proto files. 2. Message implementations Messages definitions are not enough to represent and exchange data in any programming language. We have to generate classes objects to deal with data in the chosen programming language. Google provides code generators for the most common programming languages. 3. Parsing and Serialization After defining and creating port of messages, we need to be able to exchange these messages. Google helps us here again, as long as we use one of the supported programming languages. Protobuf Message Definition now we can go about defining our protobuf schema. We will need to start with a dot proto file. Let's define the book structure we saw earlier. Now you can see the syntax. Let's understand what we just wrote. At first we specify the syntax we want to use which is proto3 and specify that we want this to be a part of the main package. Then we specify our schema. The definition in a dot proto file are simple. You add a message for each data structure you want to serialize, then specify a name and a time for each field in the message. Here, book is our data structure, which will have two fields, name of type a string and ISPN of type in 32. Keep in mind that the type comes before the variable name, unlike Go programming language. Also, each field is associated with a unique number. These numbers are used to identify our fields in the encoded message and should not be changed once the message type is in use. A specifying field rules We can specify certain rules for our message structure fields as well. Singular A well-formed message can have zero or one of these fields. 
but not more than one. And this is the default field rule for Proto3 syntax. Repeated. This field can be repeated any number of times, including zero, in well-formed message. The order of the repeated values will be preserved. Protobuf message implementation. Now that you have a dot proto file, the next thing you need to do is generate the classes you will need to read and write messages. To do this, you need to run the protocol buffer compiler protoc on your dot proto. If you haven't installed the compiler, download blood packages. You can see the comments. Then run the following command to install the Go protocol buffer plugins by the command that you see. The compiler plugins protoc-gen-go will be installed in Go bin, defaulting to Go pass slash bin. It must be in your pass for protocol compiler protoc to find it. Now run the compiler. First, go to Go Pass and SRC folder and go to your project. Then run below command protoc dash dash go underscore out. The dash dash go underscore out flag specifies which directory the generated Go code for the dot proto will be stored in. We are keeping it at the root of the project. The second argument as asterisk specify which file to compile. Here we are compiling all files with a .proto extension. Running this should generate a book.pb.go file with the equivalent Go code that we will require to use our book protocol buffer. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about protocol buffer concept. And in this session, it's time to go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use protocol buffer. First, go to Explorer and create a project folder like name library. Library. Create a folder inside it named protocol. Protocol. And create a file called book with the proto extension inside it. Book. The. Proto. First, we define the syntax inside it and set its value equal to proto3, which will represent the protocol buffer version. Syntax equals proto3. Now define option and set go underscore package value. So we write option go underscore package equals slash protocol the go underscore package option defines the import path of the package which will contain all the generated code for this file the go package name will be the last pass component of the import pass now define protocol buff for example we want to name it book so write message book and define two variables first name by the string type and second ISPN by the int type a string name equals one and int 32 ISPN equals two in order to be able to use our protocol buffer class, we must first compile it. When we compiled it, a file with the extensions .pb.go is created inside the project. 
which is the equivalent of the protocol buffer in Go Lang. And we will access the components in the protocol buffer through the created struct file. Before the compile, first install requirements packages. So we write cd library go get dash u google dot golang dot org slash proto buff first execute this command and after it a slash proto and after run this command run cmd a slash pro talk dash gen dash go first install these three components before i installed them required details were installed now it's time to compile our protocol buffer file to create the equivalent golang file so go to project pass and write compile command protoc.exe dash dash go underscore out equals for destination we set dot that indicate current pass and for source pass go to the protocol package and call book dot proto file protocol and call book dot proto and execute the command okay we can see that a file called book.pb.go extension was created in the project pass, which we can use to exchange our data. Now go to the root of project and create a main file and create a main function to use this protocol buffer. Create a file main.go package main and create main function func main first define a variable from book struct and initialize it for example book colon equals ampersand protocol dot book and initialize it name for example go programming language and ISPN for example one two three four five and six notice that the fields start with a capital letter now then we use the Marshall function from Proto package to serialize our protocol buffer data and store in the data variable which we display. This will print our encoded data. This function accept a Proto message object as input parameter and return two values, first a slice of byte and second an error value. So define two variables like data and error. Data comma error colon equals and calling marshall function from proto package proto dot marshall and set book as proto message now check error status log dot fatal and set a message marshalling error now we want to deserialize the encoded message 
I read the protocol buffer so we declare a new pointer to the book struct with empty fields. New book colon equals ampersand protocol dot book. Then we use the onMarshal function to deserialize the encoded message stored in the data and stored in a new book. OnMarshal function parses the white format message in byte slice variable and places the result in proto message. So first define an error variable and call onMarshal function from proto package. Go to the next line error equals and calling on Marshall function from proto proto dot on Marshall function and set data variable as byte array data and set new book as proto message as result value new book And check error status log dot fatal and set a message for a row on marshalling error Finally, we use together methods get name and get ISBN that provided in our generated code to retrieve and print the fields. For display book name value, we call get name getter. So we write fp name colon new book dot get name. And for display book ISPN value, we can get ISPN getter. FP ISPN new book dot ISPN. We format the code and save the project. Now let's go to run the project. Go to terminal and run the project. Go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output name go programming language and ISPN one two three four five six. So we were able to create a protocol buffer and use it inside the main method. First, the data were serialized using the Marshall function of the proto package and displayed. Then, serialized data by the onMarshal function from the proto package is exist serialized or the other words deserialized and displaced. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Go Programming Language course. Implementation of Client and Server Project by Protocol Buffer In this example, we want to create a program that establishes communication between a client and a server through the Protocol Buffer. Therefore, our program has two parts a client part and a server part. The client is supposed to send the information to the server in a serialized manner and the server will receive the data then the serialized and display it. Now it's time to go to VS Code program to create our project client and server. First go to explorer and create a project folder like named information. Inform 
information. And create a folder inside it named protocol. Protocol. And create a file called person with the port extension inside it. First, we define the syntax inside it and set its value equal to proto3, which represents the protocol buffer version 3. Proto3. And now define option and set go underscore package value. Option. Go underscore package slash protocol the go underscore package option defines the import path of the package will be contain all the generated code for this file the go package name will be the last pass component of the import pass now define protocol buffer for example we want to name it person message person and define two variables, first id by int type, second name by the string type, and third age by the int type. So we write int 32 id equals 1, string name equals 2, and int 32 for age equals 3. In order to be able to use our protocol buffer class, we must first compile it. When we compile it, a file with the extension .pb.go is created inside the project, which is the equivalent of the protocol buffer in Go language. And we will access the components in the protocol buffer through the created structured file. Now it's time to compile our protocol buffer file to create the equivalent Golang file. So go to the project pass and write compile command cd information and run the command protoc.exe dash dash go underscore out equals for destination we set dot that indicate current pass and for source pass go to the protocol package and call person the proto protocol package and person port now run the command now we can see that the file called person.pb.go extension was created in the project pass which we can use to exchange our data it's time go to the root of project and create a main file set the package name and define main function to use this protocol buffer main.go package main and create main function func main in this case first define two functions for communication between client and server first create a function for running client that we name it run client so we write func run client And create another function for running server that we named it run server. Func run server. We can send parameters to the program and runtime by the console line. Flag package has the ability to read and receive these sent parameters and provides them to the program. So in this part, we use the flag package. Go provides a flag package supporting basic command line flag parsing. We will use this package to implement our example command line program. The command line arguments are available in the os.arg slice. The flag package allows for more flexible of them. In addition, there are third-party packages with additional features. 
The flag package contains multiple functions for parsing different flag types. There are two alternatives for each flag type. The difference is that the first one returns a pointer to a variable and the other one accepts a pointer to the variable. One is string and the other is string var. With flag.args, we can parse non-flag arguments. These must follow the flag arguments. Using the flag package involves three steps. First, define variables to capture flag values. Then define the flags your Go application will use and finally parse the flags provided to the application's open execution. Most of the functions within the flag package are concerned with defining flags and binding them to variables that you have defined. Now let's go to create a flag parameter. First define a variable and calling a string function from flag package. A string function defines a string flag with a specified name, default value and usage a string. The return value is the address of the string variable that stores the value of the flag. So first define a variable like option colon equals calling a string function from the flag package flag dot a string. Set a name for the flag, for the example, admin, comma, and set a value for the flag, for the example, server, comma, and set a description of the flag, for the example, communication between server and client so we register a string flag with a string function now calling parse function from flag package go to the next line flag dot parse parse function parses the command line flags from os.args must be called after all flags are defined and before flags are accessed by the program now, by inserting a switch, we analyze the value of received flags and decide what the program will do. For example, one function to call. So we write switch on the option. Now define cases for the switches between received flag value. In this step, we want to call the client function if the received value is client and call server function if the received value is server. So we write case client calling run client function if case is client run client case server and calling server function if case is server run server now we could define a flag and switches between return values in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
for example, Kim and age, for example, 25. Now we use the Marshall function from Proto Package to serialize our protocol buffer data and store it in the data variable which we display. This will print our encoded data. This function accepts a proto message object as input parameter and return two values. First, a slice of byte and second, an error value. So define two variables like data and error. Data, comma, ERR, colon, equals proto dot marshal. Set person as a proto message, ampersand, person. And check error status. Log dot fata. And set a message for error marshalling error. Now we want to send the created data to the server. This data must be transferred to a port on the server that the server can read data from that port. So we design a function called send data that information can be sent to a specific port inside it. To do this, we use the TCP protocol. So first create a function name send data func send data that accept a byte array as input parameter data byte array okay now calling dial function from net package dial function connects to the address on the named network this function accepts two parameters as network and address by the type string and returns two values as a connection and error so define two variables like connection and error colon equals and calling dial function from net package net dot dial for network we set tcp and set address for tcp networks the address has the form host port the host must be a literal IP address or a host name that can be resolved to IP addresses. The port must be a literal port number or a service name. So we write 127.0.0.1 colon and set port for example 8085. Now check error status. set a message for example connection error now calling differ for closing connection after function is completed differ connection dot close now by calling the write function we will write the information into the connection connection dot write and set data as parameter data now go back to the run client function and send the data to the server by calling the send data function send data and set data as arguments data so far we have been able to receive data from the client and send into the server by designing two functions run client and send data
In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we could implement run client function and send data. And in this session, we want to go to implement run server function. So go to the run server function. First, we must tell server to be ready to listen a port. And this port is the same port that we defined in the send data function. To do this, we will call the listen function from the net package. This function announces on the local network address and accepts two parameters as network and address and return two values as listener and error. First, define two variables like listener and error. Listener and error colon equals invoke listen function from the net package net dot listen set tcp as network parameter for tc networks if the host in the address parameter is empty or literal on a specified ip address listen listens on all available unicast and anycast ip addresses of the local system and now set address as address parameter for the example 127.0.0.1 and set port 8085 check error status and set a fatal error log.fatal listener error In this section, we design a for loop that the server is always listening to the specified port. So for this purpose, we used from accept function. So write for and calling accept function from listener. This function returns two values as connection and error. Connection and error colon equals and colon accept function from listener dot accept check error status log dot fatal and set a message listener error We are now designing go routine function to receive a connection as an input parameter and be able to read the received data. We can define function here. So we write go for define go routine go func and define a variable like c as connection parameter c net dot com. and set connection in parentheses as input parameter for function first using defer for closing connection defer c dot close let's time to read receive data for this purpose we use from read all function from ioutil package Read all function reads from reader until an error or end of file and returns the data is read. This function accepts a reader as input parameter and returns two values first in byte array as data and second an error. Now define two variables data comma error colon equals calling read all function from IOUtil package IOUtil 
and read all function set connection variable as reader parameter connection first check error status log dot fatal error dot error now it's time to deserialize the values in the data and put them inside the person object first create an object from person strike like person colon equals ampersand protocol dot person now calling on marshall function from proto package to deserialize the data value into person object so we write proto dot on marshall and set data and person as arguments and display the person value fp person now we can implement the server function this function is always listening on the defined port to receive information and on marshal it we were able to implement the client and server function sections now it's time to run the program for this purpose we use two separate terminals to execute the client and server methods to do this right click on the main go file and select the reval file expeller in the window that opens hold down the shift key and right click and select the open powershell option now a new powershell terminal opens for us and do this again so another terminal opens for us resize the two open terminals inside the screen so we can see both at the same time okay now we use these commands to run our program once with the server flag and once with the client flag so for the server we write go run main.go dash admin and server flag and go to client and write go run dot backslash main dot go dash admin by client flag and run now we see that after running the client the data is displayed on the server side do this again Yes, we can see the person information, ID 1, name, Kim, and age 25. So in this tutorial, we succeed to implement a protocol buffer by serializing the data on the client side and sending it to the server. And the server is listening to get information and receives the serialized data. So the serialized data and displays it. Okay. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye.